Hey everybody and welcome back. As promised, here's a continued video um, on my gifted, thrifted, crafted bag for craft room so that you can get all the juicy details of um, exactly what I have in here, what it is, where I got stuff from, and you can also, I'll also tell you uh, what was actually gifted, thrifted, crafted, and begged for. So stay tuned. So I'll start by talking about the first thing that was gifted to me, which was actually the craft room. So the craft room was the first gift. The craft room used to be my son's bedroom. The room is approximately 12 by 14 square feet. Uh, we decided hey, we should switch rooms. Um, he was on board, so it worked out for me. I got a brand new craft room that is much larger than my previous craft room. Um, and he got to relocate in a different part of the house, which he was pretty much excited for. So it worked out for everybody. Continuing on with the items that were gifted to me, I'll talk about my two sewing machines that were given to me by my mom. She is an avid sewer and she loves to do machine embroidery. When she decides to upgrade her sewing machines or embroidery machines, she likes to pass the machines that she is no longer using down to myself or my sisters, which is great for us because they are still great machines that are still relevant, that people are still using. Um, she just decided that she wanted a new machine or new machines that have other features or that she liked a little better. The first machine she gifted me was the Husqvarna Viking Designer J35. Um, and she also gifted me the Brother SE625 sewing and embroidered machine. Both of the machines are multifunctional. They both sew, they both embroider. I love them both. I'm learning how to digitize and these machines have worked out great for me. Um, and so a big thank you to my mom for giving me those machines. Another group of things that were gifted to me also by my mom are my Cricut machines. So not only does she love to sew and machine embroider, she likes other crafts too, but she also likes to give the gift of crafting. So usually for my birthday, she will give me, um, traditionally it has been that she give me a crafting item, usually a device or a machine that she either knew that I wanted or she thought that I should have. She purchased my first Cricut machine for me a long, long time ago, which was, I believe, the Cricut Expression, maybe the Cricut Expression 2, because it wasn't the first one. Um, and then as Cricut came out with better machines, she would upgrade from there. Even though I would tell her the machine that I have is perfectly fine, she still wanted me to have the most updated machines. So I don't have the expression anymore, but I do have the Cricut Explorer Air, the Cricut Maker, and also the Cricut Joy. I believe she also gifted me my Cricut Easy Press. Um, well, shame on me. I don't remember either her or my husband um, or them collectively uh, decided to get me the Cricut Easy Press. So that was another gift. The next gifted item I'll talk about is this desk. It was also given to me by my mom. She had this desk at her house. She was using it as a vanity, I believe. And then when she updated it and got a new vanity or a new table that she's using for her vanity, she I, I had mentioned before that I really liked the desk and that if she'd ever get rid of it, um, I like it. So I went on ahead and put my dibs in for the desk and she remembered that. So when she did update her desk uh, for whatever she was using it for, she called me up and said, hey, you can come and get this desk. I got something new. I sent my husband over with the truck. He loaded it up and here we are. I love this desk. It works really nice in the space. I can also use it in other areas of the house if I decided I don't want it here. I'll end up keeping the desk for a very long time. Another item that I have that was an awesome gift is this blanket that my sister crocheted for me. Um, she knows that I love Kate Spade. I love the uh, colors that she uses and I love that she uses the black and white stripes. So I mentioned to her that I really wanted to find a blanket like in the Kate Spade black and white stripe pattern 
and she said that she'd be able to make me one. I'm like, great, because not only um, will it be in the the pattern or the style that I like, it will be a handmade item given to me by her. And so I just love this blanket. I keep it here on my couch um, just for aesthetics. Or um, if I decided I didn't want to use it that way, it is still cozy and comfy to curl up in. So this is one of my favorite gifts that I have in here. Another gifted item or items that I have that I absolutely love um, is my pink tool set. I actually have been given two pink tool sets by my husband. One set some years ago um, that now I still have some of the pieces to it, but a few of the pieces had gotten lost and at least one of the pieces had gotten damaged. So this year he has decided to um, update my pink tool set. So he got me a brand new one. So now I have um, a few tools that I have two of, which you can never have too many tools, but this was a better set because it has some things that the other set did not come with. He also added a pink power drill, which I absolutely love. He knows that I love to be independent when I'm doing my little projects and I've hung all the shelves in this room. I've also installed my pegboard myself. Um, so he saw that as an opportunity to go ahead and get my get me my own power drill since I had been using his. So, and of course he'd go look for his power drill and it would end up being here in my closet or somewhere here in the craft room. So I absolutely love that he uh, decided to gift me my tool set and my pink power drill. I absolutely love it. So now I'll go into some of the things that I was super excited to get that actually fall under the beg for category. Again, I didn't really have to beg for them, but they were kind of splurge items, items that I definitely did not need to spend extra money on, but I wanted them and so I got them. So one of the first things I knew I had to have in my new craft space that I didn't have in my old craft space was a new storage system. So I was using some modular shelves, um, just the PVC material type that you can snap together. I have one left in my closet, I'll show you. But I had a bunch of those shelves and I had a bunch of my stuff on them and it worked out well, but I knew I wanted to replace those with a large Calyx unit. Um, I researched and decided I wanted the large, five by five unit that had 25 cubbies in it. But I quickly changed my mind when I start thinking about um, what if I wanted to rearrange things? What if I wanted to change it up a little bit? The five by five unit is a very large and I figured moving it around wouldn't be very easy. I decided to still go with the Calyx units, but I decided to get four individual units and I, uh, that I knew I could use them all stacked up to look like one unit or I could break them apart. So I opted to get two of the two by fours and two of the two by two units. I stacked them up and like I said, if I ever wanted to break them down and move them around in the room, I have the option to do so. So those were my first splurge item. I didn't really need them. As I said, I had a storage system already, but I really, really wanted them. The next splurge item that I'll show you is my craft slash cutting table. I also got this table from Ikea, um, not in the same trip, but I actually went back to Ikea to get it. Um, I had a craft slash cutting table that I was using in here and I let it live in here for just a little bit and then I decided um, it was no longer working for my needs um, in the space. I did want a slightly bigger table um, so I decided to, I did a little bit of research, looked at all the tables they had at Ikea, um, and decided I did want a different table. When I went to Ikea, I did not get the table I originally went there to get because I saw it in person and it also didn't seem to fit my needs. Um, I did decide on this really cool sit stand table it's a crank style sit stand table which works out for me because i did not want to be bothered with needing to operate the table with an electrical outlet um, and having the cord in the way i don't crank it up and down a whole lot throughout the day every once in a while i'll change it from standard height to counter or barstool height 
Um, I actually put wheels on the bottom of the table to make it mobile so it moves around the room. This table works out for me. I really like it. My next splurge items that I decided to get are these pink drafting chairs. I got a ton of feedback um, when I posted my mini video clip on Facebook from uh, everybody wanting to know where I got these chairs. Everybody loved the pink chairs. I got the pink chairs on Amazon. I just went on Amazon and typed in pink drafting chairs because I knew I wanted drafting chairs because they needed to be able to uh, get as tall as counter or bar stool height but still as low as regular table height. So I didn't pick the cheapest chairs, but I didn't pick the most expensive chairs. I kind of went off of the reviews and found that these chairs were pretty well priced um, for what the reviews were. And these are the chairs I decided on. Um, so no, no real particular order, just they were very well priced and had pretty good reviews. My next splurge item is my light fixture. I absolutely love this light fixture. I knew I wanted something a little less basic than replacing the existing ceiling fan, um, which I knew I was gonna update anyway. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to find something that was functional. I still knew I wanted to have a ceiling fan because this is an upstairs uh, room that gets fairly warm, especially during the summer months. But I wanted something that was pretty and fit the aesthetic of the room. I found this uh, fandelier is what they call it because it's a fan and a chandelier. I found it on Amazon. They also have it at Wayfair. I actually bought one from Amazon and another one from Wayfair. I have one in my bedroom now. Uh, it's the same exact one. They still have it on Amazon, but I think it's out of stock on Wayfair. But yep, I chose this one. It has a retractable clear blade that fans out when you turn the fan feature on and retracts inward to virtually invisible um, when you're not using the fan. So I love this light fixture. It is one of my favorite things, absolutely hands down in the room. And it was definitely a splurge. Another item that's a little bit of a splurge item only because you can find these a whole lot cheaper than what I paid for them is my pegboard. Um, it's actually two pegboards. They came in a set of two from Amazon for about 40 bucks. And I know you can get cheaper pegboards from your local, local hardware store cut to size. And um, Ikea also has pretty nice pegboard systems. This one I wanted specifically just because it's metal and I knew I wanted to be able to use magnets with them, with the pegboard as well as the actual pegs. So I do have a few magnetic shelves um, on the pegboard that are actually spice racks with the magnetic strip on the back. Um, they stick really strong on here. I can put something fairly heavy on it and it's not going to fall down. I also made a few, um, I made this uh, pen dispenser or pen holder for the Silhouette pens actually with my Cricut Maker um, out of chipboard. I put some magnetic strip on the back of it and this holds up pretty well on this pegboard as well. So I just knew I wanted to also be able to hold things magnetically on the pegboard as well as hang things on the hooks. So this worked out for me fairly well. Now I'll move along and talk about my thrifted items. So one of the biggest items I found at the thrift store, one of my favorite finds is my couch. This couch is a, it's actually a sofa bed. So it does pull out into a full size bed once you remove the cushions. I really liked it when I saw it at the thrift store. It looked very gently used. Um, it almost looked brand new. The mattress looked pretty much new, but I knew I could replace that if I needed to. Um, the couch, I just, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about the original upholstery. So I found this white or cream ivory colored uh, sofa cover at Amazon that fit the couch perfectly. I also covered the pillows and added a few throw pillows. And this has become one of my main pieces. So it was a really good find and I love this couch. I had my husband add casters to the bottom of the couch, really heavy duty ones so that I can move the couch around freely. So that works out great for me. So the next 
thrifted item I'll talk about is this antique style desk. I'm not sure if it's an actual antique, but it definitely has an antique style. Um, I found it in a thrift store. It was already painted white and it could use a fresh coat of white paint, but it's working well for me for now. So I'll leave it as is. I did go ahead and change the knobs. They were a dark brass color to these kind of blingy um, crystal style knobs. And I'm actually thinking about changing those out again with maybe a brushed gold look. And I think it'll just make the desk look a little bit updated. I love this desk. It has tons of storage. I love that it has the, uh, hutch part of the desk that's not removable but it has drawers and a few cubby holes in it and then I love that it has the glass over the top of both layers or levels of the desk where you can put designs underneath or pictures underneath or whatever you like. Um, I also love that it has this storage shelf at the bottom that fit the smaller size I believe 11 or 12 by 12 I think they're like 10 or 11 inches. Um, the smaller, cheaper fabric uh, storage bins, they fit perfectly underneath there. So I love that about this desk. It has tons of storage. I can fit tons of things in it. I do love this desk. It was one of my favorite finds. My next thrift store find here is this Calyx style bookcase. Um, I believe it's uh, by the Better Homes and Garden brand. I know it's not a Calyx unit just because it has a totally different feel to it. Um, it's a little bit heavier um, and not as sturdy as the original Calyx units. Um, so then there's, so there's that. But it still serves the purpose um, for the things that I need to use it for. And in fact, this is what I was using before I even got the calyx units and that's how i knew that i wanted the actual calyx units the next few items that i'll talk about from the thrift store are these uh cube units here i believe probably from michael's maybe recollections brand i just found these two that were the exact same size they have separators um they house my rhinestone collection very well i went on ahead and made these little cardboard drawers and covered them with um, adhesive vinyl and I'm using these little gold command hooks that I found at Target for the drawer pulls and these have been working out for me very well. I have all of my little rhinestone supplies like the glues and things in these little drawers and actual rhinestones and some other tools in these little clear uh, containers that I believe I got from Amazon or maybe even Marshalls. You can find these everywhere. But I like these little cubbies. Um, they've been working out well for me, so I'll keep them around for a while. I also found at the thrift store this larger cube. I only found one of them, but I like that it had the separators in it as well. I actually had to adjust the separators or the little shelves in the inside because I knew I wanted to house these larger plastic containers that I'm using for my vinyl scraps and um, pieces of cut vinyl that I've already cut designs from that I'm not ready to use yet. They work in these containers very well. Um, so I configured this cube to fit those these plastic containers exactly and those have been working out for me very well. So moving along, I'll talk about some of the things in the craft room that is actually a, was a craft. Um, that makes up the design element of the room. So the first thing I'll talk about is my um, wall of wisdom here, which is nothing more than some uh, funny quotes and sayings that I either saw online or got inspiration for online that I went on ahead and printed out or made up in my um, design software and then printed out. And I just put them in a Dollar Tree frame. So that worked out really well. My next DIY that I was super excited to do is my window valance. I knew that I wanted to add a window valance just because the window with just the blind is kind of drab looking and plain. So what I did is I purchased a window valance. It actually came in a pack of two from Amazon. I'll link those down below. Um, I knew I didn't want to make them like as and actually sell them because I can get them fairly cheap. I think they were like 13 bucks maybe for a two pack, which you can't beat that. I just went on ahead and used my Cricut Maker 
and made my uh, to cut out my logo design and I just used my Cricut Easy Press and ironed it right on. I did find this black lace trim from Hobby Lobby. I also attached that to the back of the valance at the bottom using um, Heat and Bond Strong um, iron on adhesive strip. I didn't want to use the sewing machine and sew it across, then leaving a seam across my design. So I decided to use the iron on adhesive bond. Um, it worked out great. It's on there pretty good. I don't see it falling apart anytime soon. Um, and if for some reason it does, I have another balance and I can make another one. Another DIY that adds a bit of design to the room are my uh, little snowflakes that I cut out for the holiday. Um, once I got the room all set up, it was close enough to the ho holidays that I did. Um, I knew I wanted to put a few holiday decorations up. I had found this this one single snowflake at Walmart. Um, it was about four dollars, and it seems like it's like made out of chipboard and then covered with glitter. I really liked it. I knew I wanted more. I'm kind of, I kind of got a little bit on the cheap side. I didn't want to buy a whole bunch of them for $4. So I decided that I could find a snowflake design on the internet and cut it out with my Cricut Maker, which is what I did. I just used glitter cardstock that I had here on hand um, and, and made more snowflakes. I think if I saw them flat in like maybe a file folder or something like that, um, I will probably be able to use them again for next year or maybe even a couple of years um, ahead. So I'll hold on to them for a while and see how well they last up. You're probably, you could probably make them a little bit heavier or even cut them out of chipboard if you have a Cricut Maker. Um, but I decided cardstock is fine for now. So one of my other DIY projects that I've done, and it's actually an unfinished project, I've not completed it 100% um, yet, um, is my craft paint holder. So what I did is I just cut them down a little bit shorter than the craft paint bottle. I haven't glued them together yet, but I did find this kind of um, decorative box that just so happened to fit all of the rows that I had cut. So I wanted to see what it would look like all put together. So I stuck them all in the decorative box, put the paint in it. It fits so perfectly. I just left it that way. So it'll stay that way for now until I decide to go ahead and glue them all together. And I'll probably outline them with foam board instead of using the box. So it's working out for me. I really like it. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and do another post of it once I actually finish it. So that's it for the things that were gifted, thrifted, crafted, and begged for um, in here. So thanks so much for coming back and uh, letting me share this information with you. If you have any more questions about anything else that you see that I did not um address is let me know in the comments below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe um the more subscribers i get i guess the more motivation that i will have to do more similar videos um if you have any suggestions on what you would like to know about i'll probably do an about me video sometime soon just so that um, I can tell about all the different kind of crafts that I do. Um, I may do some tutorial videos on some of the crafts that I've done or plan to do. So just let me know what you want to hear about. And like I said, the more subscribers, the more motivation. Thanks.